what if everything you thought you knew about the first Americans was wrong? For most of the 20th century, textbooks confidently declared that the Clovis people were the very first to set foot on the American continents. They were portrayed as brave hunters crossing a frozen land bridge from Siberia during the last Ice Age, around 13,000 years ago. Their iconic fluted stone spear points were considered proof of their pioneering spirit and technological brilliance. This was the Clovis first theory, simple, neat, and universally accepted. But science doesn't stand still. And the more we've learned to extract secrets from ancient bones, the more this clean-cut narrative has started to unravel. In 2014, a discovery in Montana shocked the world. Inside a child's 12,600-year-old grave, surrounded by finely made Clovis tools, researchers extracted DNA that told a very different story. This wasn't the DNA of some long-lost Siberian tribe or a people completely wiped from history. This was the DNA of a child whose genetic lineage continues in Native American populations today. Suddenly, the Clovis people weren't just a mystery, they were a revelation. They weren't the beginning of the story, and they certainly weren't the end. They were a vibrant chapter in a much older, more complex saga. In this video, we're diving deep into that saga. Using cutting-edge genetic research, we'll explore the surprising origins of the Clovis people, the ancient populations they descended from, and the legacy they left behind. Prepare to rethink everything you know about early American history, because what lies beneath the soil may change the way we understand human migration forever. This is the true story of the Clovis people, told not just by artifacts, but by their own DNA. The story of the Clovis people begins not with DNA, but with stone. In 1929, a young man named Edgar B. Howard stumbled across a set of strange, finely crafted spear points near Clovis, New Mexico. At first glance, they looked like other ancient Native American tools, but something about their design was different. Sleek, symmetrical, unmistakably advanced for their time. That discovery would spark one of the most important archaeological debates in American history. These unique tools, now famously known as Clovis points, were unlike anything seen before. They were fluted, meaning they had a channel carved into both sides, likely to help attach them to spear shafts. This design wasn't just functional, it was innovative. Clovis points have since been found all across North America, from the East Coast to the Rocky Mountains, from Mexico up into Canada. Their widespread distribution baffled early researchers. How could a single culture be so dominant across such a massive continent? As more sites were uncovered, such as the Blackwater Draw site in New Mexico and the Dent site in Colorado, scientists began piecing together a picture of the Clovis way of life. These people were highly skilled hunters, known for targeting Ice Age megafauna like mammoths and mastodons. They left behind kill sites and campsites scattered across the continent, giving us a glimpse into a world that existed over 13,000 years ago. For decades, the Clovis I model dominated scientific thinking. It proposed that the Clovis people were the very first human beings to enter the Americas, crossing the Bering Land Bridge from Siberia into Alaska, and then rapidly spreading southward through an ice-free corridor as the glaciers receded. The timeline made sense. The tools were consistent. The theory fit like a puzzle, until it didn't. In the late 20th and early 21st centuries, new evidence began surfacing at archaeological sites like Monte Verde in Chile and Buttermill Creek in Texas. These sites contained human artifacts that predated the Clovis culture by thousands of years. Suddenly, the idea of Clovis being first didn't hold up. But rather than diminishing the Clovis people, this revelation made their story even more compelling. It meant they weren't originators, but adapters, innovators, and a powerful link in a much longer human chain. In terms of technology, Clovis tools represented a pinnacle of early human engineering in the Americas. Their precision and design suggest a deep understanding of stone napping and weapon mechanics, likely honed over generations. The sheer spread of Clovis artifacts also hints at a highly mobile culture one capable of traversing vast distances, following game herds, and adapting to diverse environments. Ultimately, the discovery of the Clovis culture opened the door to a deeper, more complex understanding of early American prehistory. It challenged assumptions, sparked decades of research, and led scientists to ask bigger questions about who the Clovis people were and where they really came from. Now, with modern genetics entering the picture, we're closer than ever to answering those questions. For much of the 20th century, the prevailing theory among archaeologists and anthropologists was clear-cut. The Clovis people were the first humans to set foot in the Americas. 
This belief was based on compelling evidence. The distinctive Clovis points found scattered across North America, all dated to roughly the same time, around 13,000 years ago. Their sudden and widespread appearance suggested a single, rapid migration event, possibly through an ice-free corridor that opened between the massive glaciers covering Canada during the last ice age. According to this Clovis First model, the ancestors of the Clovis culture crossed the Bering Land Bridge from Siberia into Alaska during the last glacial maximum, when sea levels were lower. From there, they supposedly moved southward through this corridor between the Laurentide and Cordilleran Ice Sheets. Once they reached the open lands of North America, they spread quickly, following and hunting large Ice Age animals like mammoths and mastodons. This theory fit well with what was known at the time. The tools were sophisticated, consistent, and carbon dated to a time earlier than any other known human presence in the Americas. For decades, the scientific consensus treated the Clovis First model as fact. School textbooks, museum exhibits, and documentaries all repeated the same story, that the Clovis people were the founding population of the Americas. However, cracks in this theory began to appear as early as the 1980s. Archaeological sites like Monte Verde in southern Chile provided evidence of human activity dating back over 14,000 years, well before the emergence of Clovis technology. These pre-Clovis sites contained hearths, simple tools, and even preserved food remains, strongly suggesting that people had been living in South America at least a thousand years before the Clovis culture arose in North America. More evidence followed. The Meadowcroft Rock Shelter in Pennsylvania and the Buttermilk Creek Complex in Texas both offered compelling indications of pre-Clovis human presence. These findings didn't just shift the timeline, they challenged the simplicity of the Clovis first narrative. If humans were in the Americas before Clovis, then the Clovis people weren't the first, they were a part of a broader, more complex wave of migrations. Still, many scientists hesitated to abandon the Clovis first model entirely. Some questioned the dating methods of pre-Clovis sites or argued that these earlier groups didn't necessarily represent sustained populations. But as more evidence piled up, a new consensus began to form. The story of how humans populated the Americas was far more complicated than a single migration event. Today, traditional theories about Clovis origins are still respected for their foundational role in American archaeology, but they've been largely replaced by a more nuanced understanding, one that includes multiple waves of migration, coastal routes, and perhaps even early seafarers. The Clovis people are no longer seen as the original Americans, but rather as an important chapter in a much longer and richer human history on this continent. And thanks to breakthroughs in genetic research, we now have even deeper insights into where they truly came from. The true turning point in unraveling the mystery of the Clovis people came not from stone tools or ancient campsites, but from a tiny skeleton buried beneath the soil of Montana. In 1968, on a private ranch near the town of Wilsall, construction workers accidentally uncovered the burial site of a young child, about one year old, who lived more than 12,500 years ago. Alongside the remains were dozens of finely crafted Clovis artifacts, projectile points, tools, and ochre-dusted bones. This was no ordinary grave. This was the only known human burial site directly associated with Clovis technology. Named Anzic, one after the family who owned the land, the remains were preserved in a way that made them perfect for modern scientific analysis. But it wasn't until 2014 that researchers were able to extract and sequence the child's genome, marking the first time scientists had obtained a complete DNA profile from an ancient American individual. The results were nothing short of groundbreaking. Anzic 1's DNA showed a clear link to modern Native American populations, particularly those in Central and South America. This finding was huge. It provided the first direct genetic evidence that the Clovis people were indeed ancestral to many present-day indigenous groups. It also disproved older theories that proposed Clovis people might have come from Europe, based on similarities between Clovis and Salutrian tools from Ice Age France and Spain. Anzic 1's DNA confirmed their origins were from Northeast Asia. What made this discovery even more compelling was the connection between Anzic 1 and ancient Siberian populations. His genome revealed a genetic bridge between the Upper Paleolithic peoples of Siberia and Native Americans, essentially confirming that early humans had indeed crossed the Bering Land Bridge, but likely in waves and at different times. Moreover, Anzic 1's DNA helped resolve debates around the Clovis First model. If Clovis people were related to other indigenous populations, then they weren't an isolated or unique group, they were part of a much broader migratory story. 
This helped explain why Clovis technology appeared so suddenly and spread so rapidly. The people using it were part of a network of already established communities in the Americas, possibly adopting and refining a powerful new tool-making technique. One more fascinating insight from Anzic. One was his close genetic affinity to Central and South American indigenous peoples, more so than to those in modern northern regions. This challenged earlier ideas that migration moved in a straight line from north to south. Instead, it hinted at a more complex pattern of movement, intermixing, and settlement that scientists are still working to fully understand. In short, Anzic, one was a revelation. His tiny bones held answers to questions that had puzzled researchers for over a century. His DNA didn't just connect dots, it redrew the map of human history in the Americas. And with each new ancient genome uncovered, the story of the Clovis people and the ancestors of millions of modern Native Americans continues to evolve. One of the most fascinating twists in the genetic story of the Clovis people is their deep ancestral link to ancient Siberia and East Asia. This revelation didn't come from archaeology alone. It was uncovered through advanced genetic analysis. It turned long-held theories on their head. Anzic, one, the infant buried with Clovis tools in Montana, held DNA that was a genetic time capsule. When his genome was sequenced, scientists were stunned to find that about one-third of his ancestry traced back to a group known as the Maltaburet people. These were ancient hunter-gatherers who lived in Siberia some 24,000 years ago. Their remains had previously been discovered near Lake Baikal, and until then, they had no known genetic connection to Native Americans. This changed everything. The genetic overlap between Maltaburet and Anzic one proved that Native Americans, including the Clovis people, descended in part from this ancient Siberian population. But that's not the full picture. The remaining two-thirds of Anzic's DNA matched East Asian populations, pointing to a mixed ancestry formed before their migration into the Americas. What does this mean in plain terms? Before the first people crossed into North America, their ancestors had already been mixing with different populations in Northeastern Asia. This mixed gene pool gave rise to the genetic blueprint of the first Americans. In a way, Clovis people weren't just a new population. They were the product of a long history of human movement across Eurasia. Interestingly, genetic ties also link Native Americans, descendants of Clovis and related groups, to modern indigenous Siberians like the Chukchi and Ivenki. These links reinforce the idea that ancient people were mobile, adaptive, and connected over vast distances even before written history began. So the story of Clovis' DNA doesn't just begin in Montana or Alaska. It stretches back to the icy plains of Siberia and the mountain ranges of East Asia, where people hunted mammoths and shared genes that would eventually shape the earliest Americans. Far from being isolated, the Clovis people were part of a massive, ancient story of migration, adaptation, and survival that spanned continents and millennia. For decades, the Clovis' first model was gospel in American archaeology. It argued that the Clovis people were the first to populate the Americas, arriving through an ice-free corridor in central North America around 13,000 years ago. But new genetic and archaeological evidence has thoroughly shaken that belief, and it's now clear that the Clovis weren't first. They were part of a much bigger picture. The Anzic, one genome, was a major blow to the Clovis first theory. It showed that Clovis individuals were genetically connected to modern Native American populations, particularly those in Central and South America. This suggested that humans had been present in the Americas long before the Clovis toolkit appeared. In other words, Clovis wasn't the beginning, it was a milestone in an already ongoing human journey. Supporting this were multiple archaeological discoveries. Sites like Monte Verde in Chile, dating to at least 14,500 years ago, clearly predate Clovis culture. These sites contain stone tools, hearths, and even remnants of plants and food, strong indicators of a well-established human presence. If people were living in South America before the Clovis culture even existed in North America, then the Clovis could not have been the first. Further evidence came from the Buttermill Creek Complex in Texas, Galt Site, Meadowcroft Rock Shelter in Pennsylvania, and other pre-Clovis locations. These places revealed tools and artifacts older than the classic Clovis points. And even more crucially, these findings suggested that early Americans might have arrived by coastal routes, traveling along the Pacific shoreline in boats, rather than pushing through icy inland corridors. This idea, known as the Coastal Migration Model, gained credibility as researchers realized that the ice-free corridor likely wasn't habitable until after Clovis culture had already emerged. That means people had to have been in the Americas earlier, using a different route altogether. 
In sum, the Clovis first theory has been effectively dismantled by genetic data and archaeological discoveries. While the Clovis culture remains incredibly important and widespread, it's now seen as one part of a broader, more diverse story. The first Americans likely arrived earlier via multiple routes and developed unique tools and cultures that included, but did not begin with, the iconic Clovis point. Although the Clovis people disappeared thousands of years ago, their cultural fingerprints still echo through time. Their finely crafted stone spear points, fluted, symmetrical, and remarkably advanced, remain one of the most iconic artifacts of early North American history. These tools weren't just weapons, they were symbols of innovation, precision, and adaptability. Found across much of the continental U.S., they represent the wide reach and influence of the Clovis culture. But tools aren't the only legacy. The Clovis people were master survivalists. They thrived in a landscape filled with massive Ice Age animals, shifting climates, and untamed wilderness. Their lifestyle, built around big-game hunting, mobility, and strategic resource use, laid a foundation for later indigenous cultures to build upon. Even today, archaeologists find traces of Clovis campsites, hearths, and kill sites, offering glimpses into how they lived, hunted, and migrated. In a deeper sense, their DNA lives on. Modern Native American populations carry the genetic echoes of Clovis ancestors, especially through ancient lineages that originated in Beringia and Northeastern Asia. While the Clovis cultural style eventually faded, likely due to climate changes and megafaunal extinctions, the people themselves didn't vanish. They adapted, evolved, and gave rise to countless other tribes and cultures across the Americas. So, while there are no Clovis people today in name, their legacy endures through genetic lines, cultural memory, and archaeological marvels. They were among the earliest chapters in the story of humanity on this continent, one still being written and reinterpreted with each new discovery. For generations, the story of the first Americans was told through tools, bones, and migration theories. But now, thanks to breakthroughs in ancient DNA, that story has been rewritten. Clovis people, once thought to be the original settlers, are now seen as part of a more intricate tale of movement, mixture, and survival stretching back tens of thousands of years. The genome of Anzic, one cracked open new possibilities. It revealed not just a Clovis child, but a genetic roadmap connecting ancient Siberians, East Asians, and Native Americans. DNA evidence confirms that the ancestors of indigenous Americans arrived long before the Clovis culture emerged, possibly 15,000 to 20,000 years ago, and used multiple migration routes, including coastal paths that bypass glacial barriers. What's more, DNA shows that early Americans were not a single group. They split into distinct branches soon after arriving, giving rise to the diverse indigenous cultures across North and South America. The Clovis were one influential group among many. Today, genetic science continues to uncover lost lineages, forgotten migrations, and hidden connections. It helps indigenous communities reclaim their heritage and provides a powerful tool to understand how humans spread across the world. In the end, DNA hasn't just challenged old theories, it's enriched them. It tells a deeper, more human story, that the first Americans were explorers, innovators, and survivors whose legacy lives on not only in their descendants, but also in the very code that makes us who we are.